Hi, welcome to Behind the Scene at the Rhododendron Species Botanical Garden. I am Atsuko and I'm standing in the propagation greenhouse where we house all the seedlings and the cutting starts. And uh, today I'm going to show you how we propagate rhododendron from cuttings. And the reason we do cutting propagation is, uh, here's an example. Uh, this is rhododendron lutium uh, cultivar called Golden Comet. This is our selection and it's selected for this deep yellow fragrant flowers, of course, as well as the resistant to powdery mildew. And if I were to collect a seed off of this plant and grow them on, I cannot sell those little pups as Golden Comet because they are not uh, identical to this plant. So in order for me to propagate this plant and sell it as Rhodonium Golden Comet, I need to do asexual propagation, which includes cuttings, grafting, layering, tissue culture, and so on. And the uh, easiest and fastest and cheapest way for us to propagate this plant is from cutting propagation. So that's why we do cutting propagation. And uh, this morning I really uh, went out and got some cuttings, but uh, to collect cuttings, you want to collect them early in the morning and that's when the temperature is still low and humidity is still low. So as humidity is high, so that uh, in that condition, plants are less likely, less likely to be stressed. So that's when you want to collect your cuttings. Uh, time of the year when to collect cuttings. Uh, I usually start cutting preparation right around now, early May, all the way into fall. Uh, this time of the year, I do a lot of deciduous azaleas and uh, uh, because they get ready first thing. And um, it's hard, uh, so let's show you how to take cuttings. Um, you're looking at this branch from, uh, from the garden. This is what I know, Lutheum Golden Comet, same plant as this one. If you look up this, you see a terminal bud, which is the, this one that's going up, straight up, much thicker and much stronger. And on the side, you're looking at lateral bud, or axillary shoots. That's a little bit weaker coming off of the terminal bud, and that's the cuttings you want to collect. So this side shoot has a lower amount of nitrogen in the shoot, and higher amount of carbohydrates, and that's the condition you want. This uh, strong shoot, uh, a terminal shoot, has too much nitrogen in it. That's a natural root, root inhibitor, so you don't want to take this uh, strong shoot. So that's what you want to collect. Um, time of the year is very difficult to define because there's no one easy answer. But one way to tell is if you collect these cuttings, if you snap in half, well, it didn't really snap, but this is ready. <laughs> uh, it's ready uh, versus if you just, you know, it doesn't snap if it bends and then it's too soft. So. You know, this sort of thing, the more you do, the better you get a sense of, and I'm, I'm still learning as I go too. So, you collected your cuttings, and uh, let's show you how to prep them. So, there are a couple that I'm gonna show you. So, if you collect your cutting, you can just stick this as it is in the, in the media. Uh, you wanna reduce the amount of the leaf surface, because if you stick it as it is, this uh, shoot will lose too much water from the leaf surface, faster than it can replace from this uh, stem. So what you want to do is to reduce the amount of leaf sur surface. So what I'm going to do is to reduce the number of foliage to maybe three, three or four. So something like that. And then cut the leaf surface in half. Sometimes depending on the size of the leaves, I take out two thirds of the foliage. So that's, uh, that's again, uh, depend on what, what you're working with. Again, this one, same thing. Reduce the leaf surface. And you wanna use sharp tool, needle nose, nose snip for that. Something like that, okay. And then before you stick them, you wanna uh, cut the stem. Use the brand new razor blade. And where you want to cut is right below the node. Node is where the leaves are attached. So right below the node, cut in an angle, just like that. Node is tend to be where cutting will form. So that's why you want to have at least, you know, one, at least one node. If you have more than that, that's great. Um, 
include it in where you're gonna stick. So that will go right into the water, just like that. So everything in here is ready. All right, so before we stick them, uh, I'm gonna talk about the hormone that we're gonna use. So we're gonna put rooting hormones. Um, this one's powder, uh, Hormex number eight. So this is uh, for um, about 8,000 ppm. So it's moderate to difficult to uh, root species. It's used for that. This is uh, also a uh, hormone, but this is a liquid form. So for liquid, I use it for deciduous azaleas and by areas, which are the tropical bodyguards. And everything else I use a uh, powder form. Uh, hormone. Just a white powder like that. And because this, what I'm working today is a deciduous azalea, I already, I already made up a uh, hormone here. This is uh, diluted, diluted to 10 to 1. And uh, this sake cup works really well. Or if you have shot glass, that will work really well too. All right, so let's bring the uh, media. Now I already mixed up the, the media we're going to use. So this is a mixture of uh, perlite and coconut core. Uh, two, part, two parts perlite and one part coconut core. Uh, they're moist, moist, so they're ready to stick. Um, so what I'm going to do is to get all the cuttings out. Dip the end, end of this uh, stem for three seconds or so and then stick. Um, so you want to stick deep enough so that cutting will stay straight up, but not too deep so that the leaves will uh, touch the media uh, because that's where I tend to get grow algae and uh, I don't want that to happen. So you keep doing that until you finish uh, your cutting. Um, and once you finish sticking, this whole flat will be watered in and placed under the mist on heated bench and uh, this will start rooting in, root in six to eight weeks or so and as soon as that starts to happen then that will get moved into a band pot which is a uh, pot like this again uh, that we move into ceiling, ceilings in the same pot and then roll them on until they're ready to be moved up to a gallon pot so that's, uh, that's how we propagate our dendrons and uh, we help produce about Oh, 15 to 20,000 cuttings a year. And of course, not everything has 100% rootability, so uh, end product is not as many as that. But uh, yeah, cutting season is beginning and I'm very excited. So hope hopefully uh, uh, we have a good season. Thanks for watching.